So our most important finding from this um, study is that one and a quarter million deaths each year are attributable to antimicrobial resistance. And the way we come to that conclusion is by analyzing the largest ever data set on AMR, uh, bringing together data on hospitalization, on death certificates, on uh, laboratory data from many, many countries in every region of the world to be able to put together this uh, new assessment of the magnitude of AMR. And to put it in context, AMR is now a leading cause of death in the world, larger, for example, than some global health um, uh, well-recognized priorities such as HIV and tuberculosis. Government have to control use of antibiotic. This is very important, especially we have to prevent, as a doctor, we have to control ourselves, do not prescribe antibiotic when is not necessary when there is no any evidence that shows that this antibiotic is effective on the this uh, pathogen. There are some super bugs that we think about, things like MRSA, uh, multi-drug resistant E. coli, uh, Pseudomonas, which are the actual bacteria, but they cause sort of common day infections that we're all fairly familiar with and experience things like skin and soft tissue infections or cellulitis, urinary tract infections, uh, or pneumonias. And when these infections are caused by resistant bacteria like MRSA or E. coli, uh, they can result in more severe infections that are harder to treat. Uh, in many cases, it can result in sepsis, which can ultimately lead to death. Another concerning result is that children are especially at risk. One in five antimicrobial resistance deaths occurs in a child under the age of five. And most unfortunately, many of these infections would have been treatable if the pathogens that caused them had not been resistant to antimicrobials. Our current action plans are not ambitious enough to stop the AMR threat. While resistance levels continue to grow, antibiotic development has not kept up. Between 1980 and 2000, 63 new antibiotics were developed and approved by the FDA. Between 2000 and 2018, only 15 additional antibiotics were approved. 